Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Primal Blueprint Podcast. If you're listening, today is also a video episode with one of my favorite authors, Ariel Ford, the author of The Soulmate Secret and several other books that are amazing. But if you're curious about her, we did interview her on episode 271 of the Primal Blueprint Podcast. And today we're going to talk all about manifesting love and her new free, amazing 75-minute webinar and also a Love Codes course, which I'm going to take. And I want you guys to join me because I am determined to find my soulmate this year. And I love all of her work and it's helped me so much over the years refine the things I'm looking for and my experiences. So we're going to talk all about that today and some other really fun stuff. So if you don't know her work, uh, she was... Uh, the author of The Soulmate Secret, and also Turning Your Mate Into Your Soulmate. So that's another book for people that are already in a relationship and maybe things have gotten stale and you need to kind of regenerate things. That's where you go. Um, Welcome back to the show, Ariel. Thank you, Elle. It's really good to see you. So I'm really excited about what you have coming up. I've taken a free webinar years ago that really helped me, even just the free webinar itself with all the speakers you had, Oh, gave me such a different way of looking at things and how I attracted certain experiences in my life. And things were just so much better than my previous dating experiences. And I knew that I was on the right track. Um, I don't know where we want to start here, but maybe I have an idea. Think, yeah, you, you know, because the word soulmate is so loaded for so many people, I'd love to give you my definition so that we all get on the same page. So I believe that a soulmate is first and foremost, somebody you can completely be yourself with, somebody with whom you share unconditional love. And when you look into their eyes, you have the experience of being home. And if you accept that definition, then the really awesome great news is that you already have many soulmates. It could be your parents, your kids, your siblings, your co-workers, your dogs, your cats, your neighbors, because all of them, or some of them at least, will fit the definition. You can be yourself with them. You share unconditional love. And when you look into their eyes, they feel like home. Now, the fastest way I have found to magnetize a romantic soulmate is by having a daily gratitude practice where every day you have so much gratitude for all the love you already have. Now, the reason for this, and I'm sure you already know this, is the way the law of attraction works is by frequency and vibration. So if you're in the vibration as, oh my God, I'm so lucky, I have so much love, all the universe can do is give you more love. As opposed to, oh my God, I'm all alone, love is missing, I don't know where my soulmate is, poor me, I'm a loser in love. And when you're having those thoughts and that frequency, all the universe is going to give you is more of the feeling of missing. You know, and I think this resonates with highlighting something you've said before in your books and in general speaking, which is continually wanting and putting out there like, where are they? I want this so badly is going to create more of the wanting, right? Like I have to lose weight. I have to lose weight. Well, you're going to be in a position where you're going to have to lose more weight. And so- Can you talk about that shift? And this is one of the things that would absolutely do it. I love that. Yeah. Um, So so the law of attraction is a real paradox, and it's hard to hold on to. Because on the one hand, you need to be in this feeling, believing state that what I've asked for is already mine, which means that you need to go into action to become visible to your soulmate, to actually get off the couch and out of the house and be somewhere where you can meet them. And at the same time that you're in this state of desire and the state of action, you also have to simultaneously be in a state of detachment and surrender. And it's hard to really get that balance of, oh, I have this deep desire for love. Love seems to be missing. And yet put yourself into the feeling state. Well, I already have so much love in my life. And while I don't know my beloved's name or the date we're going to meet or where we're going to meet, I can, if I want to, meet them right now, right here. And the way that you do this is by reminding yourself what you already know about quantum science. Because in quantum science, we all know there is no time, right? There's just this now moment. There's no past. There's no future. There's now. And what quantum science also teaches us is that we all live in a field. And in the field, 
we are already connected to everything and everybody. So on the unseen plane, in the field, you are already connected to your soulmate. And the way to make contact with them is to drop from your head to your heart and then imagine a golden cord of loving light extending from your heart out into the ethers, into the universe, landing in the heart of your beloved. You won't see them. You won't know their name. You won't have any details. But you can start the connection right now today and start the relationship today by beginning to talk to them every single day on the unseen plane. Isn't that cool? It's so cool. And I love that too. You know, that goes to some of your feelingizations that you offer in your audiobook, which are sort of like these visualizations of imagining also imagining being held if you're in bed, someone snuggling you. You know, there's all right. sorts of little things that seem like pretending in playtime, but it works. And right. And and I actually have a feelingization for this called um the golden cord feelingization. And it's free on my website, soulmatesecret.com in the free stuff area. So it's called the Golden Cord Vealingization. Only takes eight minutes. You can do it once or you can do it every day. But I promise you, if you start doing it and you start remembering on this cosmic level that nothing's missing, that your soulmate is already with you, and then it just becomes a timing issue. You know, when are you going to trip over them in the 3D world? But if you do this exercise, when you meet them, you'll know a lot sooner whether or not they're the one. Now, I know you went through this probably in detail in the last podcast. For people who are tuning in just now, I want to say men actually have mastered this a little bit quicker sometimes with you and your coaching than women. So this is not necessarily for women, even though we are two women talking about it. So I just want to throw that out there. And also, too, you know, for those that don't know, Ariel found the love of her life and started to use the law of attraction and practice these principles. Was it 44 or 45 when you found was them? I was 43 years old when I woke up one morning and realized I'd forgotten to get married. And I saw that I'd been spending all of my time and energy focusing on building my business and my career, which was booming and it was great. But then when I realized that, oh, you know, maybe all these processes I use to manifest work will also work in my love life. And they did brilliantly, which is how I ended up getting into this business because I I never woke up one morning and went, gee, maybe I should be a love expert. You know, I was in the publishing world for many years. And when it worked for me and the process then worked over and over and over again for all my girlfriends, then it sort of mushroomed into, you know, books and speaking and all of that. And tell us a little bit too, the crux of the kind of men that you were attracting before, the patterns yeah. there versus your love of your life, right. soulmate, Brian. Yeah, so I had a real type and my type was the captain of the universe. I wanted a man who was even more ambitious than I was, that was more high achieving than I was, that was out there, go, go, go. And when I looked back on the failed relationships that I'd had, I realized that my number one complaint about all of them was that they had no time for me. And when I really went deep into what my soul was most calling for, I saw that what I most needed was someone for whom I could be the center of their universe. Somebody who was really, really generous with their love and their time and affection and appreciation. And I needed to let go of this list that I had of these, you know, captain of the universe types. And I also realized that it really wasn't truly my list. It was my mother's list, you know? And then once I was able to see, you know, what my soul was calling for and the type of heart traits and qualities I most desired in a partner, it really didn't take that long to manifest them. It was less than six months before we met. And the moment that we met, we both knew, which is pretty unusual. But I believe the the reason we both knew was that, A, I had been talking to him and he had actually seen my face in his dreams. So the day that we met, he like freaked out because I was familiar to him. But um, the truth is the law of attraction works all the time. It's kind of like the law of gravity. You don't see it, you don't think about it, and yet we know that it's there and it's working. Well, the same for the law of attraction. You know, what you put your attention on grows. If your attention 
is I'm surrounded by love. I'm deserving of love. The one I'm looking for is also looking for me. That will end up being your experience. And if you want to live in a pity party of I'm too old, I'm too fat, I'm too damaged, all the good ones are taken, the one that was got away, all you're going to be is right. You're going to be right and you're going to be alone. So it's really important to start to manage your monkey mind. So when these negative thoughts come up, and they will, and that's normal, you just go, oh, you again, cancel, cancel. That's not true. Here's what is true. And get out your list of all the soulmates you already have. And remind yourself, mom loves me, dad loves me, sis and bro love me, you know, neighbor Joe loves me, the cat loves me, and fill yourself back up. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I experienced as well through my experience with online dating or just going on in dates or having conversations with people that I never met was you pick, and, and this is good for gathering intel. If you're not sure what kind of guy, there are people that I met where I was like, wow, that quality is amazing. I'm, I want, yeah, I want a guy like that, you know, where they right. weren't totally right for me. So I love that. It's like, you're, you're constantly gathering intel. And, and you and can so that's do, way do it. yeah, do this with your past relationships, make a list. Oh, my ex so-and-so here are the things I love that I'd like again. Here's my never again list, you know, deal breakers, you know, and you can go back that way to see, you know, what you're most attracted to. And the, the, since you mentioned online dating, the thing I want to tell people, because there's such an attitude of, oh, I tried online dating, it doesn't work for me. You didn't know how to online date. That's why it didn't work for you. And one of the things we do in great detail in my Love Codes course is teach you how to online date. But I'll give you just a quick synopsis of some tips that you can do right away. So one of the first things you want to do with online dating is not do a bunch of sites or a bunch of apps. Pick one, two at the most. For women over 40, the one that I have found where they have the most success and get the most conscious successful men happens to be Match.com. Okay, I got story after story after story. Even JJ Virgin met her husband on Match.com. We okay? love JJ. And we, lo- and we love Tim, well, yeah. right? Tim's awesome. So, um, so pick a site. And then you want to write a short profile, no more than 250 words max. Okay, and in this short profile, you want to be really clear what you're looking for. You know, if you're 35 years old and you want to have babies and you're looking for a long-term monogamous marriage... You want to put right at the top, I'm looking for a traditional marriage with kids, you know? And if people say, well, I don't want to scare anybody away. And I say, yes, you do. That's right. Scare those people away. Right. The ones that aren't there for you. And you don't want to give a whole bunch of lists. I like romantic walks on the beach. Tell them something interesting about you. You know, tell them what your superpower is, you know, tell them what brings you the most joy. Um, And then also give them an idea of what it will like to be with what will be like with you. So, so w- women don't ever mention sports, but you could say something like, you know, I've never been to an NBA game, but I'm a major Steph Curry fan. I'd give anything to see him play live just so that it's relatable. So uh, also in the love codes, we give you samples of uh, what good profiles look like and how to write them. But here's, here's where the magic is. So you get the profile up, you get up great pictures and just you in the pictures, no hats, no sunglasses, no kids, no dogs, just you. You want some close up shots and some body shots. And if you're security con- conscious, make sure that these pictures are not available anywhere else on the web. Nowhere else, not on your Facebook page, nowhere else, because you can now search by photos. So if you want to stay private, these have to be fresh photos. And then you do not sit around waiting for men or women to contact you. You reach out. You start reading lots and lots and lots of profiles. So let's say um, you, you read a profile of a guy named Steve, and Steve mentions that one of his favorite things in life is the gluten-free pizza at California Pizza <laughs> Kitchen. And you send him a one-sentence email that says, hey, Steve, I think we're pizza soulmates. I love the cauliflower gluten-free crust at California Pizza Kitchen. 
period. That's all. That's all you say. You don't have to say, check out my profile. You don't have to do any of that because the first thing they're going to do is check you out. And if they're interested, he'll write you back some fun, funny thing. Well, maybe we should go eat pizza together, you know, and then you get on the phone with them. Another uh, one mistake a lot of women are making, I don't know about men, but a lot of women make this mistake is they get into these long texting things with people they've never met. No, no. I just need to jump in. This is the crutch of our modern society that needs to go. It's emasculating men. Pick up the phone. I get right to it right away when I notice. And here's the thing. There's a lot of guys that text first, not because that's their manly instinct to to do that. It's because they think that maybe they're treading lightly in this Me Too area. Some some are treading lightly. And the thing is, is that I try to get off that right away. You know, a couple exchanges and I say, if you're up for a phone conversation sometime, I'd love to chat and get to know you further. That's so smart. Yeah. Yeah, because you can hear somebody's energy. You can feel them. You can get to know them. On texting, you could have the greatest, most fun six hours of texting, and then you meet them in person, and and you've just wasted all that time. So no texting. Texting in the beginning is strictly for, I'm looking for parking. I'm running five minutes late. I'm almost there. And that's it for the texting at the beginning stages. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to say a couple of things about match.com or online dating. Uh, I actually met a cousin I didn't know I had, and we were about to go on a date. So worst case scenario, you might meet a relative you didn't know you had. That was the most awkward scenario I've ever had. And then also too, um, I want to mention this. I, years ago, I had a friend who was online dating and she said, you know, and I've written posts about this. She said, you know, I, it's just so much rejection. I reach out and then no one, you know, no one emails me back. And I said, you know what, what if you found out every single guy that you emailed was a serial killer, beat their last wife? Would you feel so bad? I mean, you need to remove yourself and stop caring about what other people. You can't take it personally. They can't be rejecting you because they don't know you. You know, just like, you know, people are going to reach out to you and you're just not interested. Now, when they do, you, you do not have to respond. You know, if somebody reaches out and you're not interested, don't respond. Just like anybody who catches your attention, reach out. If you don't hear from them, it doesn't mean anything. So you have to be a real mature adult and manage your emotions around this stuff because it's not personal. It's not personal. I, I, I had one guy that emailed me back and he said, you know, you have a great profile. I honestly like tall women and, and long legs. You're allowed to have that. Thank you very much. I'm 5'2". We all right. have our preferences. No offense taken. Hey, right. he didn't need to even write me that, but we all have our preferences. So don't you know, and, and you know, you could, you could put something fun in your profile. It says, I'm a short girl with a big personality. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Or I may look short, but, you know, trust me, I carry my own. That's uh, right. Because I really believe in outing yourself, you know? Yes, I, I love this. I want to get to this because one of the biggest problems that I think I had, that I had to overcome, because I had the law of attraction, was listening, you know, really getting closer and closer, but, and we talked about this last time a little bit, but I love how you express it. I had so much shame about having a physical disability with my hands and it really prevented me. It, it was only in love scenarios. I, I wouldn't tell the person mm-hmm. I was hiding this thing. And I love how you, you just like come out and right away air it. Like, this is who I am. And I started to just, you know, I really feel like that corner is going to turn. And that's why I'm excited to take your course because I know I'm now ready because I have gotten over this vulnerability shame hump that I needed right. to work through. And you talk about that a lot about just coming. Well, we, we all have disabilities, you know, like I'm a slob. I'm a total messy, sloppy person. And when you go out to eat with me, first of all, I'm going to eat off your plate, whether you like it or not. I'm going to get my food all over me and I'll probably get it all over you. So, you know, what I just do is when I sit down with somebody, I just like, listen, I have to warn you, by the time we're done with dinner, you could be a mess, you know? (laughs) And, you know, if if you can't love that about me, then we can't be friends. It's just how it is. You know, so I'm a big fan of outing yourself because vulnerability is so attractive, you know? And if you get somewhere and and you're tongue-tied and you don't know what to do, it's totally okay to say, 
you know, you must be really special because I'm noticing I'm really nervous. I'm sorry I'm being such a geeky, crazy person, you know, but I'm nervous. That is so endearing. Exactly. Exactly. As opposed to trying to keep it all together. You know, the other thing is if you do show up for a coffee date, and the person is 10 years older or 100 pounds heavier, or doesn't look like their picture, do not sit down, okay? Don't sit down. You have two options, turn around and leave or just walk over to them and say, hey, you don't look anything like your picture, so I'm not going to stay and then leave. It's your choice. But if you sit down, you're now stuck with somebody who you already know is a liar, Right. So don't I'm do glad that. You, that happened to me. I'm glad you pointed it out. Years ago, I went on a date and the person showed up and they were not even the picture of the person they posted. And entirely, oh like that takes a lot of, a lot of, that? yeah. yeah. And so uh, he showed up and I was incensed because, again, my first reaction is, you're a liar and you're not comfortable even in yourself. And this is trickery. And this is really, it was a really awkward scenario. And that's the first impression they're giving. And I basically told them that. I said, hey, man, you can do whatever you want in life, but let me break it down. This is what just happened. That's not, this is the first impression we're giving in a first impression world. Right. Now, the other thing that comes up a lot with women in online dating is whether or not they should tell the truth about their age. I say yes. I say yes. It depends on what your age is. So let's say you're 65 and you can pass for 50. Uh, I think it's okay to lie when you're setting up the profile, but at the last sentence of the profile should be just to be a hundred percent authentic. The truth is my real age is 65, but I put in 50 because I didn't want the algorithm to miss the opportunity to meet you. So you out I like the way the you end. said that because yeah. I see that a lot on profiles, but t- sometimes it's a turnoff because you're like, why would you, and you get it. But when they're like, Hey, I did this for the purposes of this. I like how you put it. Cause I may not have had the opportunity to meet you. Right. It's nice. Right? Cause then it's got a nice positive spin to it because yeah. otherwise the truth is, you know, like I'm 66 years old. I'm pretty sure I don't look 66 no. years old, but if I were dating, I'd be wanting to meet men as young as 50, you know, but the way it's set up, they wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't show up for them. So I would definitely, you know, lie about my age. I wouldn't be Photoshopping my photos or anything like that. And at the end, I would out myself, you know, you have to do what feels right for you, but that's just one solution to the aging thing. Right. Let's talk about, we chatted a little bit before the show and you were talking about how sometimes women and people who consider themselves to be spiritual and of that tinge have some trouble with manifesting love. And I'd love to hear you talk about that. Okay. So first let's define what being a spiritual person is. So from where I sit, a spiritual person is someone who practices loving kindness and compassion to themselves and to others. It's a conscious choice to be loving and giving. What seems to happen, particularly with a lot of the crowd that you and I know, is that they live in this world where they wake up early and have their green drink, and then they do their meditation, then they go to hot yoga, then they go to Whole Foods to buy non-GMO organic paleo food, then they get stuck in traffic on the way home where they're cursing up a a storm And then by the time they're home, they've had so many negative, toxic thoughts. What's happened is they've wiped out all the time, energy, and money they spent meditating and going to yoga because they consider everything I just talked about to be a spiritual lifestyle. What I just described is a healthy lifestyle, which is brilliant and it's good, but there's no connection between doing yoga and being a spiritual person. Because if that were true, Russell Simmons wouldn't have four counts of rape against him right now because he's written all these best-selling books on yoga and meditation. So it's really important for spiritual women to, here's the nicest way to say it. Most of the, the women I know who lead the healthy lifestyle are some of the most judgmental women I've ever met. And they're hardest on themselves. They're judging themselves. They're trying to keep themselves a certain weight and a certain thing because they need to look good because their ego is so fragile. 
So when you're that judgmental on yourself, you are also that judgmental with other people around you. And there's nothing spiritual about being a judgy person. So my belief is the women in that category tend to consider themselves very intuitive. And so they meet a man and within 20 seconds, he's it, he's not it. And the truth is their intuition couldn't be more wrong because what the research shows is that the majority of women who do manifest their soulmate didn't experience any attraction until the fifth date. The fifth date, there was not instantaneous heat and fire. And the reason for this is because women fall in love between their ears. Now, some men have love at first sight because they're so visual, but I rarely ever meet a woman who has love at first sight. So what happens is they go to the coffee date, they've made up their mind in 20 seconds, he's not it, they tune out, they're not listening, and they're bypassing all these spectacular possible men. That's part one of it. Part two of it is that you know when they're putting together their must-have list, a lot of these same women have on their list, he must be spiritual. Now, what they really mean by that is that they're doing what Alison Armstrong calls looking for the hairy version of themselves, somebody to make green drinks with and go to yoga with. But that is no indication of their values. So what's important is you don't want a spiritual man. Now, it may be nice if he is, but that shouldn't be the goal. What you're really yearning for is a conscious man. And a conscious man is a man who lives his life on purpose, a man who will take a bullet for you, a man who's going to drive your mother to the doctors, who's going to volunteer at Little League, who's going to be on the board of Big Brothers, Big Sisters, who just knows how to lead a good life. He may have never, ever heard of Marianne Williamson or Deepak Chopra or Ram Dass, and it doesn't matter because he's a conscious man leading a conscious life. You get yourself one of those, and you're going to be a happy camper. Yeah. And you know, sometimes there's people that wouldn't identify that way, but when you meet them, they are naturally positively yes. tinged. They are naturally yes. law of attraction. I have met such men where I'd be like, you're the last person in the world I just expect to be having this deep conversation with. And they never read a Wayne Dyer book. Right. And see, you and I are reading Wayne Dyer books because we have this hole in our soul. We, we need to be fixed. We feel whatever it is, you know, you know, JJ talks about having um, uh, what does she call that thing? Um, imposter syndrome, you know? So we've been on the self-help personal growth path, you know, cause we're trying to get better. And there are people, this is going to be a shock to some of your listeners. There are people out there who grew up well-loved in a healthy home and they don't have these deep wounds. You know, I want a man who's done a lot of work on himself. And I'm kind of like, what are you, crazy? If they've done a lot of work on themselves, they're still working on themselves because your core wounds never truly heal. We get good at managing them. You know, we get a spiritual toolkit together. We can tap our way through anxiety. But the truth is, if you've got these deep core wounds, chances are you're going to die with them. So what you want is a conscious man who has a secure attachment profile, who grew up with loving parents or a loving parent and has you know, a lot of self-worth and confidence as opposed to a spiritual new age nice guy who's a project. We don't want projects, that's for sure. And a lot of women do that, by the way. A lot That's a really common theme uh, that I experienced myself in the past, and I know other alpha females do. So, And I mean alpha in the most positive, right. awesome way, not negative. But alpha females often have... It's it goes back to like an abandonment issue somewhere where you're like, well, I will give, give, give. I'll solve all your problems. Watch, come with me. And then in return, you'll never leave me, right? And there's a little bit of that. There's some other stuff, but that's something to watch out for alpha females. Um, And it's a bad trap because often women like us need men who also are alpha and play that play that role. Actually, we would prefer an alpha man. So in order to have the alpha masculine male, it's up to us to learn how to shift into our feminine energy at the end of the day. Because obviously when we're out, you know, ruling the world, it's great to have our testosterone going and being in our masculine energy. And it's appropriate because that's how we get shit done. But at the end of the day, we need to have a ritual so that we can stop leaning in 
and lean back and receive. So for me, I had to consciously learn how to do that. I would come home from work and take an aromatherapy bath or I'd practice my belly dancing, but I would create rituals for each day so I could drop the masculine persona because there's not room for two males if you ever want to have sex again, you know, (laughs) because there's no polarity if you're both, you know, fighting over who gets to be the guy. And it always becomes unattractive when no one wants to date their mother, sister, brother. And that's kind of what it feels like on both sides at some point when you're kind of over controlling or over uncoached alpha. And and the one other thing I want to say about that, particularly if any of your listeners are coaches. A lot of them. Yeah. You do not want to be your boyfriend or your husband's coach. If they need a coach, get a referral. You do not be the coach. If they ask you for a specific piece of advice, fine. If they're not asking, don't offer because then you become big mama, you know, and like you said, nobody wants to have sex with their mother. Right. And that's, uh, that's a, that's a bad dynamic. (laughs) Um, you know, I also just want to throw out too, you know, there's so many, we talked about this last time and people can go listen to the previous episode, but you know, from 80 year old on match.com meeting someone, you know, to someone in a wheelchair, it doesn't matter your scenario and your story about why you're not finding it. There's things to fine tune. Like I just mentioned earlier, I know that I had to get over this shame vulnerability hump. I knew I would. And you know, it's funny because I attracted people that weren't vulnerable and open and were kind of robots. And then, you know, my coach eventually was like, ah, you're the robot. (laughs) You're the robot. So, you know, there's things we got to do work on, but as well, no, there's someone for everybody. And right. that's what I love about your work because you've been and, doing it for so long and you know these stories. And one of the things you just made me think of is that there's this big push right now that everybody needs to fall in love with themselves, that we need to have so much self-love before we can have big love. And I say that's just bullshit, okay? Who you are right now in this moment is enough You know, the things that you don't love about yourself, chances are you're never going to love them. All right. But what the most intense and fastest healing you can have is to be in a soulmate relationship and see the love somebody else has for you. Nothing will heal you faster. So if you're sitting around waiting, well, when I lose 20 pounds, I'll go for love. Or when I fix this part of me, I'll go for love. A year from today, you're still going to be alone. You have to understand that there's somebody out there who's going to perfectly love your imperfections, just as you will perfectly love their imperfections and stop waiting. There's no need to wait. Yeah. And I I know this is a couple topics back, but I want to, I just thought of it, which was you know, the five dates and, you know, discounting someone. I can't even tell you how many times I've been guilty of discounting people. And here's the thing. Um, I realized that later. And then it's interesting because I didn't, I went on a date with a guy and uh, this is a while ago and uh, I, great conversation, great person. But I was like, eh, no, you know, just really discounted it. And then a year later they showed up like at my gym and I was like, all right, that's interesting. Had a conversation. We kind of went on, we went on a few dates and like by the technically third or fourth date and me ever knowing this person, I, I, the thing is, there, if there's something there that you like about them, explore because right. that, that it can turn into. And there was something, a few things that came out of his mouth on the third date that made me be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I discounted this guy on right. the first statement years ago. So, you know, of course, if someone's, if you've got a bad but got, good, good vibe and you're repelled, yeah, don't yeah. go out with them again. But if <laughs> so there's my, enough there. Yeah. yeah, my friend Carol says, if they didn't totally gross you out on the first date, give them a second chance. Right. You know? Because it takes, to, just like we're nervous on the first date, well, so are they. You have to give them an opportunity and see them in different settings. You know, and if you're willing to do that, you can discover all kinds of things. The other thing I I like to tell women is like, when you go out on these early dates, I want you to pretend that when you get home from the date, you have to call me and tell me three things you really liked about them. Because when you're looking for what's right, you're going to find it as opposed to when you're looking for what's wrong. John Gray has a great way of describing this. He said, you know, if, if I invited you to my house for a party, 
you would walk around the house and you would notice the things that are beautiful and the view outside the window and my garden and you'd be looking for all the, the gorgeousness. But if my house were for sale, you'd be walking through the house looking for all the problems. And that's how so many people are dating. They're looking for the trouble as opposed to looking for the beauty. Yeah, looking for what's right. I want to transition into, you know, I have benefited before and look forward to again. You have an incredible free seminar. It's 75 minutes. It's so in-depth. That helps... You can just listen to that alone and get so much from it. And of course, I refer the Soulmate Secret audiobook, especially because Ariel is the narrator. Um, if you like audiobooks, I love that book. I've listened to it a few times. It's helped me so much. Um, but let's talk about the the, the live webinar right. that's free and then the course. Sure. So um, on this free webinar, we give you lots of good information. So we cover things like how and why making and finding love should be a priority how to give up magical thinking when it comes to dating, ways to let go of your old limiting beliefs, um, how to get real clarity on the heart traits and qualities that your soul is most calling for, uh, ways to consciously and immediately lift your own love frequency so that you're vibrating at this higher frequency to attract love, um, how the law of attraction really works and how to use it. We teach you the super skills of dating and how to sort through the dating process. Um, One of the things I love most about this is we teach you how to create a winning dating mindset. You know, and then we also talk about more practical things like how to prepare your home for love, even how to prepare your kitchen for love. So we, it's jam packed, free 75 minute webinar. All you have to do is go to soulmate 11 soulmate11.com. You can sign up and take it uh, within 24 hours. We send you the link. And is that soulmate11.com? Soulmate11.com. Yeah. And what I love about it too, is you're really offering so much content. Um, I'm sure this is featuring some other experts as well. This is uh, this particular webinar is my teaching partner, Claire Zamet, the founder of Feminine Power. So it's Claire and I together. And then uh, if, you know, that makes a lot of sense for you, then we also offer you our 12-week Love Codes course, which has 30 hours of original material on how to do everything in a deeper, more expanded way. Uh, it's sort of the best of all my love manifestation and all her feminine power work married together. And this is for women only. Uh, and we've designed it in such a way that uh, it's for smart, successful, conscious women who are looking to have the love of their life be someone who can match them, you know, spiritually and intellectually and emotionally and be their rock and their soft place to land. And I have to tell you, Al, the success rate of this course is mind blowing. Almost every single day I'm getting emails from our students with pictures of their engagement ring or pictures of their weddings or, you know, profuse thank yous and telling us what the breakthroughs were that they had. Because, you know, just like you, if you wanted to have a high powered career, you would expect to study, right? You'd go to college and you'd take advanced CEU courses and you would actually become a master at your craft. This is sort of the PhD course in manifesting love. And I've heard Claire many times. She's amazing. And she's you both are great examples of what you're representing for these types of women as well. I mean, um, she's excellent. I've heard her so many times. Her work is so great. Tell us uh, this course. How does it work? Do I? Is it daily videos? Is it oh, jump it's around? On, it's like- on demand. So you do it at your own pace. So everything, you know, once you're registered, you can... You can binge it if you want, although I don't recommend that. What I do recommend is that you actually get out your calendar and then decide, you know, okay, I've got three hours a week to listen to the content, and then I'm going to give myself, you know, a half hour every day to put into practice or to go out and do the things that need to be done. And really take your time because, you know, manifesting your life partner is the single most important, biggest thing you're ever going to do for the rest of your life. 
So A, you want to do it with a lot of clarity and purpose. And, and you want to feel really comfortable once you dive into the dating pool, if it's something you haven't done in a long time. We also ha- give you access to a closed Facebook page. So all the other women taking the course are asking each other for advice or they're sharing what's happening for them. Because one of the things we have is um, over the last eight years, Claire and I did 200 hours of one-on-one interviews with the world's top love experts. And we have it in what we call our vault. So all of our students have full access to the vault. So if you have a particular issue, like, you know, why do men disappear on me? We have a special hour from Evan Marquette on why men disappear. Or, you know, there's just, you know, anything that comes up for you, we have a specialized uh, expert on. I am already committed to taking it and I'm so excited because I have told everyone in the world, hey, this is my this is my time. I'm really ready. I, I for sure am. Um, and I'm so excited about it because I've been building up to taking a course like this through listening to some of your free webinars over time that have just soothed me and made me feel in times of loneliness and, ugh, what am I doing? And got to get over it. And then also just your, your audio book over the years is just, um, it never gets, it never gets old. It's, it's timeless. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the, I would love to hear some of the, the, the success stories or one eighties, you know, what are some troubling scenarios people felt like, Oh, I I'm too messed up or, or okay. no one's going to love me. Right. Um, well, we had one woman who was 49 and never married and just decided that she was going to give herself one year to date online. And if it didn't happen, then she was going to mortgage her home to pay a matchmaker $100,000. So she just got really committed to what she was going to do, got really clear. She went on 79 first dates in nine months. 79. And she was a CEO of a big company. so She had to really make a lot of time. But number 80 was the perfect guy. And we danced at her wedding and she couldn't be happier. So you have to be persistent. You know, you can't give up. You have to be willing to know that it might take 79 first dates. We've also had other people that, you know, there was one woman who was an oncologist in a small college town in Florida who wrote to us and said that, you know, she was pretty, she had, oh, she had two uh, children with disabilities, in addition to having a full-time medical practice, in addition to being in a small town where she thought she already knew everybody. And out of the blue, you know, she did this work. She opened her heart. She opened her mind. She met this guy. And the way she wrote us the letter was, you know, draw jaw on the floor, dropping out of my mind in love. We're married now. He loves my kids. He's good with them. He's not intimidated by my career. And she sent us a picture and he's gorgeous. You know, so you don't know what's possible, you know, because we live in this world. If we don't know the answer to how, when, or why, we think it can't be. It's like Wayne Dyer always used to have this this, uh, great line where he would say, um, you know, so many people say, well, um, I'll believe it when I see it. Got to believe it to see it, right? Right. And the exact opposite is true. When you believe it, you will see it. And the other great thing he said was, don't believe every thought that you have. You know, just because I can't tell you on what day you're going to meet your soulmate on the 3D plane doesn't mean you haven't already met him. Doesn't mean he's not already connected to you. Doesn't mean he's not coming. You're not supposed to know. What you are supposed to do is be open, willing, and available to allow love to find you. I love it. I love it. And I also love, we didn't talk about it too much on this time, but you have so many little tips and things like preparing your home or leaving a little space in the medicine cabinet. You know, even if you have a small place, a little, a gesture, a vibration going and buying a happy 20th anniversary card that you haven't sent yet. And I, I've done some of those things and I have them around. And when I see them or like, I accidentally open the drawer and see the card, I'm like, oh, and it's just, again, it's a vibrational a reminder. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the reality you choose to live in. You know, one of the things I, I, I like to share with women is that 
if you truly believe that you are already connected to your soulmate, you're going to begin living as if so that your behavior matches your belief. So L, on the unseen plane, you and your soulmate are already connected. So what that could mean for you, and this isn't a rule, it's just something I believe in, is that you will stop having random casual sex with anybody you know is not your soulmate. Because if you knew and trusted you were with your soulmate, that would sort of be like cheating on them. You know, so there are, there are strong ways to say, yes, my soulmate exists. We're already connected. If you get invited to a wedding and there's a bounce back card, reply plus one. And if your friend calls to say, oh, I didn't know you were dating anybody. What's his name? You could say, not clear on the name yet, but just put me down as a plus one. Because in five months when the wedding comes around, you will have a name for them. So it's just these little gestures. And it may be Maybe simple. I mean, I don't know what you sleep in, but before I started this process for myself, I was sleeping in a torn, worn, stained football jersey from my high school boyfriend. It was the ugliest thing ever, but it was so soft because it had been washed 10 million times. I threw it away. I bought beautiful lingerie. I bought new sheets. And I just imagined every night that my boudoir was a love palace. And there I was on 600 count thread sheets and I had things that smelled good and looked good and fresh flowers because I wasn't going to wait to know their name. I was going to start the affair immediately. Yeah, really acting and living with it. I really love the, well, I love the monogamy before thing you mentioned because first of all, in this society, it's just way safer. And secondly, think about it. Like you're right, if you, met someone, but then you just found out they slept with like 10 random people in the past like two months, you might be like, "Mm." and I do like the whole saving yourself for one soulmate. And I'm not saying that you can't, but it's, again, I think it's mixed messages you're sending, right? You know, if you're out there and you've got an F buddy, but you're really looking for your soulmate, are you, you know, and I like that you're consistent with the vibration. So, so one of the things I recommend is that you have sex before the first date. And what I mean by that is the S is for sex. It's for self-pleasure. Before you go on the date, have some self-pleasure. Before you go on the date, the E in sex is to eat. Do not show up hungry and then end up having two drinks on an empty stomach and suddenly you're doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. And the X is to never talk about your ex on the first date. So sex before the first date, self-pleasure, eat. No talking about the ex. Yeah, talking about exes really is a negative bonding over a negative thing. And people really jump into that, especially if they've been married and they're talking about their ex spouses. And that's not really a way. And you're not learning really too much. I mean, the way they talk about it is one thing, but you're not really learning too much about the character. Right. Oh, can- one more thing I want to yeah. mention because this came, I just did a weekend workshop and this came up so much. Get really clear before you meet them in person whether or not they're available. Are they really single? Are they really divorced? Because if they're in the it's complicated thing, don't waste your time. You know, even if there's someone who's separated, that's not someone that's probably going to be ready anytime soon for marriage again. Exactly. You know, because that comes up, oh, I met this guy. I know he's my soulmate. He's been separated for nine months, but he hasn't filed divorce yet. And I said, are there kids? Yes, there's kids. Well, you know, there's a good chance they're going to get back together. And how long are you willing to wait or be the other woman? So it's absolutely okay to have clarity around what their status is. You know, and you don't have to be embarrassed or ashamed that you're looking for love. It's perfectly normal. It's wired into our DNA to spend our life with another So you don't have to feel bad about it. You don't have to be afraid. You're not being pushy. You ask in the sweetest, kindest, gentlest voice, um, you know, are you, are you single or divorced? That's it. I'm single or I'm divorced. If you get anything other than that, there may be a problem. Yeah. I would love you to share with us some of the heart math Institute statistics or, I mean, not necessarily specifically, but on unmarried people and and the benefits of marriage, the health benefits. Okay. Yeah. Actually that's called the marriage effect. And it's, um, I forget what university it's from, but what they've discovered is that couples who are happily married live longer, experience less pain when they are injured and have healthier lives. And it, 
only it's called the marriage effect and the marriage effect only kicks in once you're married. So you could be in a long-term loving relationship, but you don't get the benefits. They don't know exactly why, but Harville Hendricks thinks the reason why is because the primitive part of our brain knows that there's no real true commitment there, that they could leave you at any time. But when you are in this solid, stable, happy marriage, you will live longer and experience less pain. And for men, they've proven happily married men live seven years longer than single or divorced men. That's amazing. I uh, just will put everything in the show notes, but if you want to check out, and again, this part's only for women, the 75 minute seminar, and that leads into the course about the love codes, which is soulmate11.com. But the soulmate secret and lots of Ariel's books and programs are for, for everybody, right? I mean, is that yes. correctly? Yeah, this stuff works equally well for men. It's just the love codes course. We really uh, women t- tend to need it a lot more than men. Like even when I do my live workshops, I've never gotten more than three men in a workshop at a time, you know, dozens and dozens of women, but not so much men. And part of it is that, you know, men don't live, live with a voice in their head saying you're too old, you're too fat, you're too damaged, right? <laughs> you know, they may have other voices, but they, they tend to, uh, if they make up their mind, they're looking for love, they tend to do better. Yeah. And they tend to be a little bit less, um, they're kind of shameless sometimes about their appearance or other things. They're, they're, they're a little bit more inclined to be accepting of themselves that way. Yes. Yes. They don't assume, oh, well, I put on 20 pounds, therefore I'm unlovable. You know, yeah. they don't have thoughts like that. What, what else, uh, before we go, what can you leave our audience with? What else is there to, I mean, there's so much, I know I've listened to these seminars well, before, so here, I know that's 75 I- minutes. Yeah, here's what I know for sure. That big love is possible for anybody of any age, any site, any geographical location. God is not up there pointing down going, you, you're the only one who doesn't get any love. There's more than enough love. There's no shortage of conscious men and conscious women. All you really need to do is be willing to invest a little time and energy and intention and attention, just like you would if you were looking for a job. You wouldn't resent doing that. That's just the process. This is what I need to do to find my dream job. Well, there are things that you can and should be doing to find the one who is also looking for you. I love it. Thank you so much for all of your love inspirations and also just all of the free webinars that you have done because those alone, which again, are a great taste of the course to come, they are in themselves just really providing so much great free content. And you've been so generous to come on our show twice. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. 